All right. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm back. <laughs> All right. So this is my first video since being back. So I apologize if we have any hiccups um, because I'm, you know, trying to figure everything out again. Um, anyways, uh, we are doing unit four, which is our trigonometric functions unit. Today we are on day five and we're going to learn one of the most important topics that is going to continue with us the entire rest of the school year because the entire rest of the school year is trigonometry. So, um, that is the unit circle. So, um, this is something that we are going to use almost daily for the rest of the school year. So it is very, very important. Um, and it is a big factor in um, calculus for next year. So you have to know your unit circle values. So today we're going to define what is a unit circle. We're going to take a look at our uh, special right triangles, which you may remember from either geometry or algebra two last year, maybe. Um, and then we are going to fill in a unit circle diagram together, which we are going to go pretty quick through the diagram because once you get the first quadrant, everything else kind of fills itself in um, as long as you change the positive and negative signs. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first things first is we want to talk about what is a unit circle. Um, so if you've heard of this term, maybe um, you kind of have a general idea. Um, maybe you, you know, know that it has something to do with special right triangles, or maybe it has something to do with some values. Anyways, we're just going to kind of talk about it. So first off, a unit circle is very basic. It is just the term we use for a circle that has a radius of one. That is all a unit circle is. All right, so a unit circle, any circle that has a radius of one. Literally, that is a unit circle. Okay, so um, there we go. My face is not in the way. Cool. It, it fit. That's it. The period is the end. All right. So that is what we mean by a unit circle. It's just a circle that has a radius of one. Um, so I'm going to kind of sketch out like on our coordinate plane, because a lot of times we're dealing with unit circle. Um, we are graphing them on a coordinate plane or we're using them to graph things. So we are going to graph some of our trig functions. Actually, we're going to graph all of our trig functions. <laughs> I don't know why I said some of them. We're doing all of them. Um, so we need to take a look at what this looks like on a coordinate grid. All right, so here we go. So here's our x, y axis. So here we got x, here we have y. All right, so if we're drawing our unit circle, we're going to draw um, a radius of one. So this is just going to be kind of like a, a sketch of like a triangle in the first quadrant. We know a circle, don't judge me, I can't draw circles, but <laughs> <laughs> something like this it's coming you know the thing so this is a circle all right so we start at the center um the origin is actually the center of the circle even though i know that mine looks very messed up uh it should be you know the origin zero zero should be the center of the circle mine is just gross we'll look at a better picture in a second anyways um, so here we have our radius of one. So all I did was draw a line straight down and then an over. So this is going to be our, uh, right angle right here. Um, this is theta. So that's our angle. So anytime we're looking at unit circle, just like, Ooh, hold on, we got to pause. <laughs> all right. I bet Miss Marker didn't throw her pen across the room when she was doing videos. Ugh. Her videos were probably better than mine. Anyways, so um, like I said, the, your theta is your angle that we're talking about, just like your reference angles. When you guys did that before midwinter break, you learned that the reference angle is always that angle between the x-axis and that kind of radius, that that you know ray that we're kind of drawing there. So that's always going to be theta. So that's our theta. All right, we know that this is our x-axis value. This is our, our y-axis value, right? X goes side to side, y goes up and down. So this point right here is the point x comma y. All right, and then we can start setting some, some things up, right? So let's look at sine. So if we had sine of theta, well, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Well, if theta is our angle, opposite is y, right? It's that y value and um, over the hypotenuse, which is one. 
So in your unit circle, your y, your sine value is equal to whatever y is, which is kind of nice, right? Um, so when you're, you know, setting up your, your right triangles and you're trying to find your sine, your cosine, your tangent, um, it's kind of nice. Sine is just whatever the y value of the point is, that's your sine value. Cosine works pretty similar. So cosine, we know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, well, if we're looking at our angle theta adjacent, right, is going to be our x value. And then our hypotenuse is 1, right? Our hypotenuse is just that radius, and it's 1. So this gives us a cosine value of just x. So when you're dealing with a unit circle, your cosine value of your angle is always whatever x is, which is also really nice. All right, last one we're going to do, we're not going to do all of them, but we are going to look at tangent so the tangent of theta, all right, we know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. All right, well, opposite our angle is our y value. Adjacent to our angle is going to be our x value. So our tangent is going to be y over x. It's kind of nice, right? Um, so it does help you when you don't have to do so much math, right? So usually when you guys were doing this stuff before break and you had a point, you were given a point, um, you had to like draw the triangle, use your Pythagorean theorem to find your hypotenuse, and then you had to, to kind of set up the ratios and simplify. And it was like kind of some of them were pretty gross answers, right? Um, this way, if you have a point and you know it's a unit circle, then you're, you know, you don't have to do as much math, right? Sine is just the y value, cosine is just the x. Tangent is going to be them as a fraction, right? Y over x. Okay, so now we're going to look at these special right triangles. All right, so the first one that we're going to look at is the 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. All right, this is also known as the isosceles right triangle. Isosceles means that you have two sides that are the same length and two angles that are the same length. Um, so in this case, if this angle right here is our 90 degree angle, right? So this angle right here is 90 degrees. That means that the other two angles have to be equal to each other they're both going to be 45, right? So if we know a triangle is 180 degrees. So if you subtract 90, that means there are 90 degrees left over. Um, and if these two angles are congruent to each other, right, the little congruent sign from geometry, that means that we just take the 90, we split it in half, and we get 45 and 45. Which also means that these two sides have to be the same. All right, so um, the sides opposite the two congruent angles have to be congruent to each other. All right, so we don't know how long those are, but if this is a unit circle, then we do know one side length of this triangle. We know that the hypotenuse is going to be one, right? So if we're doing unit circle, we know that the hypotenuse is a length of one. So even though we only know one side, since this is a 45, 45, 90, we actually can find the other sides of the triangle using Pythagorean theorem and a little bit of math know-how. So I'm going to call one side x. Well, since this side is length x, whether x is 50 or 200, I know that the other side has to be the exact same length because those two sides of a triangle are the same because it's an isosceles right triangle. So if this side is x, this side also x. All right, and now I can do Pythagorean theorem because I, you know, we can kind of set it up, right? So it's a squared, so x squared plus b squared, another x squared equals c squared, which is our hypotenuse squared, which is one squared. All right, now x squared and x squared are like terms, so I can combine those. So I can say that this is 2x squared equal to 1 squared, which is just 1. All right, and I'm solving for x, right? So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I have x squared equals 1 half. All right, and now I need to uh, simplify, right? So I need to get x by itself, so I have to take a square root of both sides. Now, usually anytime we're square rooting an x squared, we want to put a plus or minus, but since this is kind of a geometry, right, we actually have side lengths of a triangle, we can't have a negative side length of a triangle, so we don't need to worry about the plus and minus in this instance only because 
this is a triangle. Side lengths have to be positive, so I can't have negative square root of one half as a side length to my triangle. So it's only going to be positive. So this gives me x equals the square root of one half. Now, when we did radicals, we learned that we cannot leave square roots like this, right? You can't have a fraction underneath the square root. Um, rewriting this would give you the square root of one over the square root of two. We can't have square roots in the bottom of fractions. So we need to simplify and do what's called um, my mind just went blank. rationalize the denominator. Wow, that took me a second. Okay, so first off, square root of one is one. So this becomes one over the square root of two. To get rid of that square root of two in the denominator, we're going to multiply top and bottom of our fraction by the square root of two. So by square root of two times square root of two. This gives us the square root of two over root two times root two is two. So x equals the square root of two over two. So this side is square root of two over two. And then this side of my triangle is also the square root of two over two. All right, so we're gonna kind of pause at that uh, triangle. Like we're not gonna go to the next one. We're gonna jump down here to our uh, unit circle. All right, so the unit circle, this is pretty big, right? This is a big thing. Um, and there are a lot of things that look pretty scary here, but the unit circle is actually not scary at all whatsoever. Now, it does have funky numbers in it. Square root of two over two is kind of an ugly thing, um, but it's not, it's, it's not that bad, guys. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the 45 degree angles in here, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write in some of the values. So first, we're gonna start with the first quadrant. So I'm kind of zooming in right here. So this is quadrant one. All right, now where it says positive and negative, all right, it's talking about like our, our x and our y value. So what's positive and what's negative in quadrant one, right? So in quadrant one, x is positive, right? We're on the positive x-axis and y is also positive, right? Because it's going up, all right? So both x and y are positive. Now, uh, we're not gonna call it x and y, right? We're gonna call it sine and cosine because we just learned that the sine value is equal to the y value when we're dealing with unit circle. So if y is positive in quadrant one, that also means that the sine value is positive in quadrant one. Same thing goes for cosine. So since we said cosine is equivalent to x when we're dealing with unit circle, then if x is positive in the first quadrant, the cosine value is also positive in the first quadrant. And since tangent is just y over x, if you have a positive number over another positive number, then that's a positive number. So we would also say that tangent is positive in the first quadrant, all right? Um, which means we have nothing negative, none. Okay, so that's kind of like a little side thing. We are gonna fill that out for all quadrants because it's gonna make the rest of what we're doing a little bit easier. Because once we fill in the first quadrant, we can do the rest of it just by knowing positive and negatives for each quadrant. Okay, so in here, we have a bunch of lines. I know it looks really confusing, um, but our 45 degree line is this the one in the middle, right? So this is 45 degrees, all right? And we can kind of draw our, draw our triangle here. Now I know my highlighter is funky when we go like that. So I know I had to make it kind of funky looking. All right, so there's our 45 degree triangle. So right here where you see the little degree line, we're gonna put 45. All right, now the other line right above the 45, not the coordinates, this wants to know uh, the radian value because we do want to know our radian values for our unit circle. All right, so what we can do is off on the side, we can convert 45 degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180. All right, we should know how to convert. Now with the unit circle, once we convert once, we're not gonna really have to do it again, all right? Uh, so simplifying, I cross out my degrees. That's how I know I'm multiplying right, is when we can kind of, we have degree over degree, so they cross out, all right? 
Um, and then I'm going to kind of simplify. 45 over 180 is going to simplify to 1 fourth. So this becomes pi over 4, which is easy to remember, right? 45 pi over 4. Okay, maybe, maybe not. All right, so we have pi over 4. That's our radian value. All right, so we just did this triangle, right? So we have here's theta. All right, this is our 90 degree angle. Right? If this has a radius of 1, which it does because it's a unit circle, then we know the other two sides of our triangle are square root of 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2. So our coordinate for this point right here, we have our x value, which is root 2 over 2. And we have our y value, which is our up and down, which is also square root of 2 over 2. Kind of nice, right? So that's where the, the numbers come from. So we did our special right triangle. I showed you guys where the side lengths come from when we have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Um, so those are your coordinate values. All right, now we are going to go ahead and we're just gonna fill the rest of this um, out later. Not right now, actually, I lied. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Yeah, because I like it and it, it flows better, I feel like. Okay, so next we're going to look at a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. All right, so um, starting off this one, we have an equilateral triangle, meaning all three sides of this triangle are equal. So one, 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 because remember, we're dealing with unit circle here. So unit circle. So we have all these side lengths are of one. Now, this is not a right triangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, cut this triangle in half. So we're going to drop a line down through the center to make a 90 degree angle right here. So we are splitting this equilateral triangle in half, all right, which means this angle up at the top is no longer going to be, oops, didn't mean to do that. Boop. Boop. All right, so this angle up here at the top is not going to be 60. It's now going to be 30. 30 on the other side also, but we don't really care that much about the other side. We really just kind of want to focus on one right triangle. It doesn't really matter about the other one. All right, since we split that angle in half, all right, when you drop that line down, it's also going to split this bottom side of your triangle in half. So if the whole side on the bottom was one, half of one is now going to be one half. So we really are only missing one side of our triangle, which is that middle side length, right? That piece that we drop down. We don't know how long this piece is, right? So um, thinking ahead, right? I'm looking at my right triangle. I'm thinking about that coordinate plane, all right? So this is, this is like my x value, right? Because it's going to kind of go along the x-axis. So this would be my y value. So I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem, all right? So I have x squared, which is 1 half squared plus y squared, I don't know why, I don't know that middle length, equals my hypotenuse squared, which is 1 squared. All right, so now I'm going to simplify. Now, when you square 1 half, you must square the top and the bottom of the fraction. So it's 1 squared over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth, plus y squared equals 1 squared, which is 1. All right, so now we're gonna try and get y by itself. So we need to subtract 1 fourth from both sides. Minus 1 fourth. So we have y squared equals 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. Beautiful. Um, and so now we have y squared equals 3 fourths. We need to get y by itself, so we're going to take a square root of both sides. And again, just like with the uh, 45, 45, 90, I do not need a plus or minus because this is geometry. These sides are all positive, so it, I can't have a negative root 3 fourths. All right, so now what we're going to do is simplify. All right, so we have y equals the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. Right? And we know what the square root of 4 is. I can simplify that. So this becomes y equals the square root of 3 over 2. So my missing side over here is the square root of 3 over 2. So that gives me my y value. Okay, so now I can go to my um, unit circle. All right, and this is 
So here's theta. So remember we said theta. So if we draw do 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 right do 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 all right. So we draw our coordinate plane. So that means we have theta of sixty degrees. So that we're gonna go to our picture. All right, and if this one that we first drew, so hold on, let me scroll, scroll. All right, so if the one that we first drew is um, 45, we know that, doot, 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 doot. All right, we know that 60 is bigger than 45. So we are looking at this angle right here. All right, so here's our, our theta. All right, so we have 60 degrees. This is 60 degrees. So right here, 60 degrees goes on my thing. All right, so now I need to convert this to radians. So same deal. So 60 degrees times pi over 180. This is going to simplify to, oops, can't really see it. Let me scroll, scroll. There we go. This is going to simplify to pi over 3. So 60 degrees is going to be pi over three. All right, um, so now for my coordinates, all right? So when we're up here, we're looking at our triangle, all right? Adjacent to 60, so that x value is going to be one half, and our y value, that opposite side, is square root of three over two. So going back down here, adjacent is going to be one half, right? Because our hypotenuse is one, this is unit circle. So opposite is going to be square root of three over two. So then my coordinate points are one half square root of three over two. Excellent. Now we don't need to do any more math at this point, but what we are gonna do is we're gonna turn that triangle on its side. All right, so I'm gonna show you what we mean. So right here, so I'm just kind of like do, 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 right? We're getting rid of that stuff. We don't need it anymore. All right, so now we have this angle. So dropping it straight down and then over. I know this is so, I hate that these stupid fake one note highlighters are dumb. All right, so right here, we had the 60 up there. This is gonna be our 30 degree angle. Um, and let's make this like a nice blue. All right, so this is gonna be 30 degrees, and we're gonna make it fatter because you can't really see that. All right, so here's our 30 degree angle. So this is gonna be 30. All right, again, we're gonna convert this to radians. So we have 30 degrees times pi over 180, and this simplifies to pi over six. All right, so radian value is pi over six. Okay, so now we're basically twisting our triangle on its side. So let's look, all right? So if we were to look at this from the 30 degree angle viewpoint, right? So we're up here, so this is our angle. So now this becomes the opposite side and this becomes the adjacent side. All right, so it flips, right? It kind of rotates itself on its side. So what we would do, right, writing it like this, I know that's not the most beautiful. So this is 30 degrees, so then Here's one, right? There's our, our radius of one. This is now going to be one half, and this is gonna be root three over two. All right, so we're just looking at the same exact triangle just from the 30 degree angles of viewpoint. So now we're gonna go down here. All right, so our X value was square root of three over two. And then our height, right? Our height value is one half. So that's our uh, coordinate. So we have root three, over two, one half, right? So square root of three over two comma one half. Excellent, okay. That's the hard part, All right? Now I know those numbers are ugly and I know every time we do this, students are like, oh, Ms. Leslie, those numbers are so ugly, I hate them. Um, but at least the good news is they're the only numbers you have to remember. So on the whole rest of this circle, for the most part, these are the only numbers that we're gonna be dealing with. All right, so you know how I said up here, right? We're looking at positive and negative. In the first quadrant, everything is positive. All right, so now we're gonna to move to the second quadrant, right? So we're moving over here. All right, and if you think about your second quadrant, right, your X values are negative, but your Y values are still positive. All right, so positive, like I said, Y values are gonna be positive. So Y values, that's gonna be your sign, right? Because sign goes with Y. So positive in this quadrant is going to be your sign. All right, 
Um, since x is negative in the second quadrant, that means cosine is also negative because cosine is equivalent to our x value, all right? Um, and then tangent, since tangent is going to be a positive number divided by a negative number, right? It's y over x, then tangent is going to be negative, right? A positive divided by a negative is a negative number. So tangent is also negative, all right? Uh, now, so what that means for us is that we just are going to use these same points, but we're going to move them into the second quadrant and change their positive and negative signs. And the easiest way to do this is to do the bow tie method. All right, so I kind of made this up. All right, but anybody could kind of see this, but I think it makes it super easy. So let's start with the 45s because that's where we started from when we were doing this to begin with, right? We started with 45s. All right, so if you start from your 45, so you start in the middle, you go down your 45 right here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a line straight down. All right, and then you're gonna go up. You're gonna kind of like draw a bow tie. So you're following, oops, I can't draw a straight line because I am crazy. All right, straight line, follow this. Follow this line. God, this is so hard. I know it's not really that hard, but it feels hard to me. Okay, so I drew this nice, beautiful bow tie. These are your 45 degree angles. So they're gonna have the same coordinates as that original 45 degree angle in the first quadrant, all right? Now, to do your degrees, because we do need to figure out the degrees and the radians for this whole circle, all right? You can use your calculator, all right? Um, so for the second quadrant, all right, hopefully we know that this angle right here is 180 degrees. So it's gonna be 45 degrees backwards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 180 and we're gonna subtract 45, and that's gonna give us 135, which is this angle. Oops, I mean, I would need it to go back to being smaller. Writing this. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, so this is gonna be 135 degrees. So that means this angle right here is 45, right? 45 is what we call the reference angle. Okay, uh, now we're gonna continue that. So if this is 180, this is another 45 degrees right here is our reference angle. This time I'm gonna add. So 180 plus 45, that gives me 225. All right, and then over here, right? So I know originally this is, oops, wrong line. All right, this is originally like zero degrees. All right, but if you go a full circle, that's 360 degrees, right? So I'm gonna, knowing this is 45, I'm gonna do 360 minus 45, and that gives me 315 for this angle right here. All right, now we wanna convert those to radians. You can do this by hand. I'm gonna go through it really quickly um, because to me, I think of it like fractions. So in the first quadrant, I have one piece of the circle. So it's one over four, so one pi over four. In the second quadrant, I'm um, almost half of a circle, which I know this is pi, right? So half of a circle is one pi. Um, so one less than one pi is three-fourths, all right? So this one is three-fourths pi. Again, you can just convert if you want to do it that way, but I know that this is, um, I think of it, like I said, like fractions, all right? Um, in my third quadrant, it's going to be one more than a full pi. So one more than a full pi in fourths is five pi over four. So that's gonna be my, my radian over here, so five pi over four. And then all the way around the circle is two pi. And so the fourth quadrant, I always remember, is one less than two pi's in fourths. So that's gonna be seven pi over four. Again, you can convert using our multiply by um, pi over 180 technique, but I just do it like this, because I, I don't know. Fractions don't scare me, and this is kind of how I remembered them. All right, now the only other thing we have left to do is to fill in the coordinate values. So we're in the second quadrant. 
All right, so in our second quadrant, I know that the sine value, which is y, is positive, and I know that cosine, which is x, is negative. So when I fill in my thing, I'm just gonna have a negative x value, so I have negative square root of two over two, and then my y value is positive, so positive square root of two over two. All right, if we move to the third quadrant, all right, so we haven't talked about this one yet, but we can right now, all right? So thinking about third quadrant, both x and y are negative. So um, negative, I know that I have a negative sine and I have negative cosine, but if we think about tangent, right? Tangent is y over x, so it's gonna be a negative number divided by a negative number, so that's actually a positive number, right? A negative over a negative is positive, so tangent is positive in this third quadrant. All right, and since we're here, we might as well do fourth quadrant. So fourth quadrant, x is positive, so cosine is positive, um, but y is negative in the fourth quadrant, so I know that sine is going to be negative. All right, and then if we think about tangent, it's y over x, so it's a negative number divided by a positive number, which is negative, so tangent is also negative in the fourth quadrant. All right, um, one way that people remember this is, um, um, hold on. All right, so an acronym that I have heard a lot because unit circle is used a lot in calculus, so this actually comes from calculus, um, is to remember the, the positive and the negative signs, it's A, uh, S, T, C. And it stands for all students take calculus. All right, um, and it, I guess it helps remember what's positive in each quadrant. So in the first quadrant, everything, all of them are positive. Um, in the second quadrant, it's just sine is positive, so the S stands for sine. Uh, the take is tangent because in the third quadrant, tangent, right? So this is first quad one, quad two, quad three, quad four. So first quadrant, all things are positive. There we go. Um, second quadrant is sine is positive. Third quadrant is tangent and quadrant four is just cosine. So all students take calculus. All right. Um, it might help. I don't know. I've heard, I've heard people say that. So this is talking about what's positive in each quadrant. So quad one is everything. Quad two is just sine. Quad three is just tangent and quad four is just cosine. Okay. So let's go back to filling in the rest. All right. So now we can do our third quadrant. Um, our third quadrant, uh, 45 degree angle. All right, so we know that sine and cosine are both negative, so x and y are both negative. So this is going to be negative square root of two over two, negative square root of two over two. All right, fourth quadrant, we only have a positive x, but we have a negative y. So this is going to be negative square, oops, wrong line. I have so much writing going on over here. All right, so this is going to be negative square root of two, pos nope. X is positive, sorry. We have positive root two over two, but then Y is negative, so negative root two over two. All right, so there's our 45 degree angles, our little bow tie. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this with our 60 degrees. All right, so 60 degree angles, here we go. Same deal though, we can do a bow tie. So come from zero, zero, go straight up, straight down, follow that diagonal, straight down, follow that diagonal. All right, so there is our 60 degree bow tie, right? And same thing that we did with 45, we can go through and find all the degrees. All right, so remember 60 is our reference angle, so we know that this right here is 60 degrees. So we're gonna do 180 minus 60, which gives us 120. All right, we can do it down here. 60, again, is our reference angle. So we have 180 plus 60, which gives us 240 degrees. All right, and over here, we have our reference angle of 60 degrees. All right, so we can do 360 minus 60, which gives us 300 as our 60 degree angle. 
All right, and again, you can go ahead and you can convert all those degrees to radians. But again, I like the fraction method. I know in the second quadrant, it's one less than a full pi and we're in thirds. Uh, so this is going to be two pi over three. Third quadrant is one more than a full pi. So it's going to be four pi over three. And then fourth quadrant is one less than two pi. So it's going to be five pi over three. All right, and then my coordinates are um, one half and root three over two. We just have to make sure we use the right positive and negative sign. All right, so over here we have uh, negative one half, positive root three over two. All right, down in the third quadrant, we have negative one half, negative root three over two. And in the fourth quadrant, we have positive one half, negative square root of three over two. All right, last triangle we have to deal with is our 30 degree triangle. So I'm gonna go through and again, I'm gonna draw my bow tie. Even though I know process of elimination, it's the only one left, but that's okay. All right, so I start here, go straight down, draw up my bow tie, down and up. All right, so there's my 30 degree angle bow tie. So I go to my second quadrant. Again, I know that this, my reference angle is 30 degrees. So I take 180, I subtract 30 degrees. That gives me 150. Um, second quadrant, uh, or sorry, third quadrant, I do 180 plus 30 degrees. So that's going to give me 210. All right. And then third quadrant, I'm going to take 360 and I'm going to subtract 30 degrees. And that's going to give me 330, oops, 330 degrees. All right. Radians, again, same technique. Second quadrant is one less than a full pi, and we're in sixth, so that is gonna be five pi over six. Third quadrant is one more than a full pi, so that's going to be uh, seven pi over six. And then on the fourth quadrant, we are one less than two pi, so that is going to be 11 pi over six. All right, filling in my coordinates. All right, so for 30 degrees, it's root three over two, one half. In the second quadrant, it's gonna have a negative x value. So it's negative square root of three over two, positive one half. Fourth quadrant, it's going to be negative x and y. So negative square root of three over two, negative one half. And then in my fourth quadrant, it's a positive x. So positive root three over two, but a negative y. So negative one half. All right, um, last but not least, so you notice that the axes um, are kind of left blank. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, go and fill those in. So I'm gonna do that in black over here. So we already said this is zero degrees. So starting point, we have zero degrees, which is zero pi, zero radians. All right, and since we have a radius of one, this length right here is one. Well, that's our X value, right? But since it doesn't go up, right? It's a zero degrees. We don't have an up value. So our Y value is actually zero, right? So this coordinate right here is one comma zero. Cool. All right. We're going to do that up here. So this is 90 degrees, All right? So up here at the top, this is 90 degrees, which you can convert to radians if you want. Um, it's pi over two. It's half a pi, right? If 180 is pi, then 90 is half of pi. Um, and then it's coordinate, so it is going straight up like this. So there's our there's our coordinate. So it has a length of one, just like everything in our unit circle. Um, but since it's not going sideways, it has a x value of zero and a y value of positive one, right? So it's going zero x, but it's going one up. All right, moving over to pi. So this one we're going backwards, negative one, with a zero y value. All right, and then down here, right, our bottom one, uh, it is uh, 270 degrees. So it's 180 plus 90. So this is 270 degrees. So it's one and a half pi. So it's three pi over two, three pi over two radians. And it's going down one, but it's not going sideways at all, right? Uh, so we would say this is zero, negative one. That 
my wonderful students, is your full unit circle. I know this was a long video, um, but filling out the unit circle is kind of time consuming. So hopefully you were able to maybe speed through once you got the first quadrant down, you can maybe figure out all the other pieces. Um, if not, then you watch the whole 40 minute video. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that is your unit circle. Your homework tonight is on those unit circle values, trying to get you to start memorizing them because yes, you do need to have these values memorized. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Bye.